Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Kristen Bennis, and I am teaching the ninth grade science this year. Uh, the name of the course is NGSS Living Earth, um, but you will probably be referring to it as biology. That's how the kids like to call it. So uh, this video, uh, we'll be going through a couple of different things about this course, and we'll hopefully give you a better idea of what to expect from it for this year. I'm going to share my screen and work through a presentation with you. So here we go. So as I said, title of this course is NGSS Living Earth. This is the ninth grade uh, science course, which has previously been called biology. It might even still be called biology on your uh, schedules. But um, it's a little bit more than just bio this time around. So we are going to go through this presentation and you're going to learn a little bit about me. You're going to see the course description and outline, get an idea of what projects you can expect this year. You're gonna get information about grading, about course materials and the platforms we're gonna use, and then contact options for me and office hours and some tutoring information towards the end. So about me, I was born and raised in the Bay Area grew up in Lafayette. I graduated from Akalani's High School, and then I went to University of California, Santa Barbara for my undergrad. I have a bachelor's in zoology. I'm, I'm a big science nerd, and I love me some animals. Um, I eventually got my single subject science credential through Cal State East Bay. I went to the, actually, the Concord Satellite Campus, so I'm very familiar with this area. Uh, I have a Master's of Education in Curriculum and Instruction, which I received through Concordia University, Irvine. Um, I did that all online, so I have experience with online learning as a student, but in a very different capacity than what we are dealing with right now. So uh, I'm not sure if my experience helps very much, but we shall see. This is my ninth year teaching. Um, I've taught anywhere from 10th grade biology down through 9th grade biology, and I've taught um, some 9th grade earth science, some 9th grade physical science, I've, and then this is, I'm also teaching the 7th uh, grade integrated science this year at SPA, so quite a bit of experience. Um, some of my favorite things include my family. I have a husband and two young children who I, I love very much. I really, really, really like coffee. Um, it's one of my favorite things. I really enjoy it regardless of the caffeine boost, although that is helpful. Um, I love my job. I'm very passionate about teaching and being a teacher. So that's something that, you know, I really enjoy doing. I like reading and doing puzzles in my spare time. Um, I'm a big fan of like trivia nights and logic puzzles and that sort of thing. So that's just a couple of things that make me tick. So there you go. Uh, course description, it's pretty straightforward to the point. Um, this is a rigorous course that focuses on inquiry-based instruction to cover the next generation science standards which have been adopted by the state of California. It is an integrated course. So we will not only be focusing on biological sciences, we will also be covering concepts that are under the physical science, earth science, and space science categories as well. There will be a little bit of um, like physics and chemistry concepts, but it is very heavily weighted in the biological and earth science categories. So, um, there won't be too many surprises and it all sort of flows together. So don't, don't be too intimidated. Our course outline. Um, so initially on Summit, there were quite a few projects listed under this particular course. And we are gonna do our best to try and get through as many of them as possible. But with the time constraints due to our current scheduling um, with distance learning, I do not know how many of these we will get through, but we are going to work to modify and accommodate um, as many kids 
as possible in order to get this information to them. Um, these are the units that are available to us this year. And um, we may flip around their order a little bit as well to make it so that the ones that are more conducive to distance learning can be done while we're distance learning. And then hopefully as we open up to either a hybrid model or being fully back to regular school, we can start doing the ones that maybe are a little more um, dependent upon that model. So we will see, but they are. Uh, the first one we're actually doing right now, it's called My Scientist Identity, and kids are looking at uh, what are called the science and engineering practices and cross-cutting concepts. And these are two things that are very um, integral to the next generation science standards. So we are identifying those and learning about famous scientists and doing some uh, personal comparison and that sort of thing. So that's our first unit. Uh, we have what's called the Community Reforestation Unit, which is going to look at things like climate change and carbon cycle and reforestation and ecosystems and how they contribute and how humans contribute to this idea of climate change and how we can make a difference in our local communities with um, a reforestation project. So that, that might be something that could be really fun. Um, Body response investigation is going to be looking at the body uh, organ systems and what's called homeostasis. And it will be doing this by having the students design a science investigation that focuses on the body's response to stimuli. And they will perform that investigation and then run some analysis. We have the story behind our changing atmosphere, which again explores the, uh, the Earth's overall climate, how the climate has evolved over time, um, talking about its atmospheric history to today, and then talking again about climate change and what's going on with that. And they'll be taking these rather abstract concepts and making them more approachable by developing either a storybook an audiobook or a video that makes this um, easier to digest for you know the public. Uh, rescuing biodiversity with genetics is an exploration in how humans are affecting ecosystems and then looking at the way that we could potentially uh, have some conservation measures in place using genetics. So we're going to be investigating DNA, uh, genetic engineering, and then students are going to be developing a conservation project um, or plan that will hopefully help a specific endangered species uh, rebound. And there will be some genetic elements involved in that. And lastly, we have ecosystem health, uh, which will again be exploring biodiversity and stability and things like that within ecosystems. And they'll be doing this by assessing a local ecosystem and how stable it is and how healthy it is and then creating a report or a presentation that shows that. So, and again, the order of these might change and the um, content of these may change depending upon how the rest of this year goes and what our situation sort of as the situation develops, we will see um, how this goes. Grading, this is all available on Summit. 80% of your child's grade will be based on the cognitive skills as uh, demonstrated through their projects in Summit. So that is a big chunk. 14% will be based on the power focus areas that they should be completing on their own time. Um, they have to take the short content assessments in order to pass those. And then lastly, 6% of the grade is based on additional focus areas that these students will also be taking on Summit. They don't have to quite um, reach as high a proficiency as um, the power focus areas, but they do still need to be looking at those and taking those assessments. Um, and all of that is available on Summit. 
can you can view your students progress and their grades at any time through summit as well the materials that we're going to be using are summit learning uh, program that we've already i'm sure you're at least exposed to at this point that's where we're going to be having our assignments and our grading done we're going to be using zoom for attending class which hopefully your student is currently familiar with we are going to be relying very heavily on Google Classroom this year in order to make sure that we are getting resources to your kids. Um, this will be a very good backup plan and I'll get more into that in the next slide. Um, formatives is a way to do uh, checks for understanding. We're gonna do warm ups and exit tickets and other little polls and things through them. Nearpod, is a program that allows us to make interactive um, slide decks so that students can participate in our lectures and um, it tends to make things more entertaining for them uh, rather than just sitting and hearing me talk. And Loom is a sort of a screencasting uh, application that I will be using to create what I am gonna call prep videos, which will be posted for the students to watch for um, asynchronous work and homework at different times in a way to show them what we are going to be doing the next class or to guide them through an assignment that I want them to complete. So it might show them what the links look like, it might show them a breakdown of a concept that they're going to need to use, and it may just be like a run through of the agenda for the next class, which sort of just depends on what's happening in class at that time. Um, they won't necessarily be making videos using this program, but they will be receiving Loom videos from me. So that's something that they can watch out for. Uh, Google Classroom, like I said, huge resource this year. Everything that we are using in our classes, our Zoom recordings, our slide decks, our links, our presentations, anything that comes from those platforms, they will all be on Google Classroom, usually the same day that they were seen in class. They might even be put on Google Classroom before class starts. So um, this is a very important thing for our students to be aware of. Many of them are already aware of it, so that's great, but they should definitely be checking this very regularly to make sure that they are up to date because we don't see them very often and this is the best way to sort of keep everybody on track. So this is a huge resource, everything is there. So if you miss something or if you need to review something, it's on Google Classroom. Contact options, the best way to contact me is through email. This is my Coco Spa email. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions, comments or concerns. If you do not prefer to use email and you would rather speak on the phone, you can send me an email communication initially to hopefully set that up so I can get your phone number and we can arrange a better time to chat. Um, I have office hours, Mondays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 4.20. Those are by appointment. So if your student is struggling, you can reach out to me via email and arrange for your kid to come and see me on Zoom and we can have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time to hopefully clarify their issues. So please feel free to reach out about that. And lastly, we have tutoring available. So please, um, if your students are not already aware of this, please let them know that we have uh, tutoring available. Um, this information can be found on uh, the website, the school website. It can also be found in your um, letters, your uh, school letters that go home. And um, there are different levels of, looks like I have the middle school information up here right now, but um, there's some algebra one tutoring for math, there's some Spanish tutoring for all levels, and there are also some high school options in there for other um, subject matters. Uh, I pulled the wrong slide for this, but you can find them on the school website and you can find them in your newsletter that was sent home digitally 
Um, if you also are having difficulty locating that information, you can send me an email and I will let you know exactly which time slots are available. But um, this is all available online. And these people are very, very knowledgeable and can definitely help you out, help your student out with what they are struggling with. And that is it, folks. That's my little spiel. Here again is my contact information. If you have any questions after watching this uh, short video, please feel free to email me um, and I will get back to you as soon as you possibly can. And um, yeah, I hope to uh, hear great things from you and I hope to uh, be able to meet some of you and some of your students in person one day. So uh, that is the dream. And uh, until then, we are all going to get through this together. So please be well and stay safe and uh, enjoy the rest of your back to school. Day.